John. So I was watching some of your free will videos, and I completely agree with you that we do have free will, and for basically the same reason. I mean, if our brains are just clockwork mechanisms, then who says we can trust our thoughts? They're not really from us, they're from whatever clockwork me mechanism set our brain in motion, and so we have no reason to trust them. Uh, now, however, to be consistent with your position on free will, you're also going to have to hold to some kind of quantum mind theory. Uh, Simon Koken and John Conway, back in 2007, proved the free will theorem, which demonstrated that if we have free will, then it automatically follows that subatomic particles have some kind of free will as well, you know, which is basically quantum indeterminism, not free will per se, but indeterminism, and uh, that therefore our brains are able to somehow tap into this quantum indeterminism and exploit it in such a fashion as to give us free will. Now, the reason that uh, people like the Honest Discussion or don't believe that we have free will is they basically believe that our brains are clockwork mechanisms, right? You can't have free will if all the parts are purely mechanistic and Newtonian in nature. Now, I understand why you'd have a problem with quantum mind theories. As an atheist, you know, my universal OR model obviously shows that if Penrose is right, then it means that the wave function of the universe is also a mind, which is probably not something you want to, you know, not as an atheist, you wouldn't like that conclusion, obviously. However, as an atheist, you have both an advantage and a disadvantage, all right? Now, your advantage is you get to play defense all the time. Uh, the theists have the burden of proof, and we have to be kind of on the outside of your castle and shoot arguments at you constantly, right? And all you have to do is shoot them down. And most of the time, you know, I, I've seen, I agree with you, I've seen plenty of crappy arguments for the existence of God. And so, you know, say ones with Phidias notions built in, or dualist notions built in, or, you know, incoherent notions of a God built in. So, <coughs> sorry. You can shoot these down, and you often do in your channel, but your disadvantage is you don't know where the next argument is going to come from. Let's say that 99% of all these arguments are bad arguments, right? Well, you can shoot all those down, and you can be atheist as long as those arguments are bad arguments, but, you know, you never know if the next argument out there is going to be a ar good argument or not, right? So, say my argument, maybe the, you know, say you re-examine Orco R, it might hold that that's the case, in which case you, know, you can't say that it's automatically wrong. Or let's say that my argument isn't right. You never know. There might be uh, I mean, there's other arguments like that out there. There's um, Frank Tipler's Omega Point model. And he's certainly no slouch. He's very famous for his development of the so-called Tipler cylinder, which is a time travel solution to Einstein's equations. And there's uh, Paul Azizi's Big Wow, uh, which is basically a different version of my thing. It's based on the same thing as well. It's it's a, it's a universal Oracle R type of thing. So, you know, you never know where the next argument is going to come from, and so there's no reason to just kind of throw it out out of hand and, you know, basically pick your premises in advance. That's kind of the wrong way, wrong headed way of going about it, right? You have your conclusion, or you don't pick your conclusion beforehand and then pick which premises you're going to hold to. So, that being the case, just reconsider Oracle R. It's it makes, you know, if your view on free will is true, then it would automatically make sense that something like Oracle R would be true as well. So, just giving you something to think about. See ya.